G'day, how you going? Ianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to paint on a canvas cloth and I've just got the sizes up there for you in inches. And not too many colours in this one here. We'll get them going up the screen there for you. Uh, it's probably your blue, white, grey. Uh, not too many, not too many at all. Anyway, we, you, you'll learn as the painting progresses. And I've got some craft paint here on the palette and some retarded are ready to mix in it. And I'm going to bring you over here and show you what I'll do there, okay? So I've got my sky area here. It's going to be like an evening night sky. And I've got the land mass taped up because it's going to have retarder on here and I don't want it underneath this paint otherwise it makes it difficult to paint okay that's why I've got that masked up so down here I've got craft paint it's just it's not the the paint you buy in the tube it's not this artist quality paint it's just craft paint in a bottle uh, it's more of a runnier consistency and I like to prime my canvas sky area with that and some retarder now, if it's your first time here, retarder slows down the drying time of your acrylic paint. And when you paint sky colours on there, it allows you to do beautiful blending of clouds the way oil artists can get them. So we'll get all of this as I normally do. Just map all this white craft paint. Get your brush, push it on. No delicate proper way just the best way you can see I'm getting it all off the brush and all onto the canvas there like that all in there now don't leave it like that you can just get this brush now using the tips of the hairs on it and stroke it left and right and we're just evening out that white paint there now I'm going to wipe this brush because I need that white white craft paint with the retarder on it but not very thick so I'm going to go again and I'm just using the tip of the brush here to really thin in that coat of paint down on the canvas I just want it very very thinly applied now back down here I've got some phthalo blue I want to use phthalo blue for this dark sky so I'm going to grab some of that now I've cleaned that brush so it's not got white in it. I mean, it's gonna pick up white, but this is a bit of a darker blue. And we'll get our sky on here. So just crisscross it into all of this white, or like you did with the white. Crisscross it in, crisscross it in. Down to the horizon line there, crisscross it in. Wow, what an interesting sky that is, eh? Probably leave it like that, eh? <laughs> now, how dark is that? I want to um, smoothen it now, so I'm going to get this brush and do what I did with the white. Just stroke all the mess out of it. And now I'm going to darken this sky up. So I'm getting everything, all these bits here that I want done perfect. I'm getting all them stroked. There we go. Now I've just wiped that brush. I haven't washed it and I've got Payne's Grey here. So I want to pick up some Payne's Grey and get this darker value within the sky as well now. But not everywhere. So I want to get some of it laced up here from the corners and running across the top. Get those corners laced in there. Coming down there maybe. And this is probably just where I want it, like that. Get a bit more up here. Okay, now I'm gonna brush that across the sky. And then we're ready for our clouds, our evening clouds. I might put a little bit more in. What I might do is stamp it on the way I want it to be, like so. Be creative. 
And if you're painting one of my tutorials, you can mix it up, change it up, make it your own. I've had people ask, and if we do one of your tutorials, can we add extra things in it? Of course you can, that's what it's all about. Okay, I'm wiping that brush, because I just want these darker elements. There we go, some sort of darker bits in the sky there, like that. See how I change that up? Just by using your creative artistic license. All right. Now for the clouds, you want a good titanium white out of the tube I like to use, and this is gonna mix up in that sky color. So I haven't got too much on my brush because I'm gonna do the, the misty ones first and then the solid ones later, okay? So these are like in the far distance in the sky. And we wanna use this to kind of create some kind of dribbling but windswept mist within this sky. So I'm gonna kind of come there and just get bits sweeping. Now do a bit at a time. I'm getting carried away here. I was going to do the whole lot, but let's do a bit at a time. Now grab your blending brush, message me on Facebook if you want a brush like this, and we're going to turn that into light, delicate, but sensational nighttime mist in the distance of the sky. Look at that. Here we go. And I'm sweeping it upwards. It's got turmoil. Look at that. Drag it along. Manipulate that body of paint. There we go. See that beautiful soft. Now I'm going to do the same with this one. This is just subtle stuff in the sky, but it helps to have it there. Getting turmoil. I'm getting the body of that cloud pulled in all different ways. How's that look? Get rid of those little marks. There we go. Now we're gonna get a bit more in there, just some here. Move your brush around. Probably put something over here a little bit as well. See the paint's turned blue, but that's okay. All right, now the same thing again. Let's start on this one. I'm touching it, just practice blending like this with these brushes, it's fantastic. You can create beautiful stuff. Look at all that distant, misty, moonlit clouds in the background there. That black, I'll sort of hover along that as well. See, so make them up as you go. That's all nature does with clouds, makes them up as it goes. And that's what makes them so wonderful. Boom. There we go. That one's a bit bright, but that's okay, isn't it? And these ones. See what I'm doing? I'm just touching, dancing, sliding. When I feel the brush is picking up quite a bit of paint, I'll wipe it on my rag. Always need a rag. And this, see, look at that. Wipe it. This is a good way to get beautiful skies with your acrylic paints, the way I teach them. There we go, just quickly get all this blended down anyways, so we can get the real clouds in there. This is just all the nonsense in the background. There we go. Now I've cleaned that fan brush and I'm loading it up again for some clouds closer to us in that sky and i want them probably somewhere here where's that bit there so i want something about nice push them on get them on there get them on nice and thick and i want something whispering up there like that push it on get some more white careful not to contaminate all your white and you want bits of blue popping in the middle of this to break it up so it's not just one white smeared cloud, it's got charisma within it, okay? Just something like that, and then we'll add some more later. We'll, it's blending as you go. 
So these are a bit more vibrant than what we've just put on there, okay? Now I've got to wipe the brush. Look what's on the end of that. I'm going to just keep putting that everywhere else if I don't wipe it. So wipe it. A cloth towel is probably better than a paper towel because a paper towel can pull lint in your brush and you'll be brushing lint within your clouds otherwise. Take your time. I'm using main, you can see the corner, that's what I'm mainly using. Okay. Get some of this all turmoiled up. And because it's a night sky, we're not going to need any other values there. Okay, we'll probably put something behind here. Oh, I'm going to use the corner of it. Just popping out from that mountain there and coming down. Get up there a bit and come down like that beautiful and probably if we can get something just bring its way out here a bit more brighter than what's there okay let's try that blend that now so here we're gonna i'll, I'll leave the top of this one now because it's getting a bit lower in the horizon leave the top and i'll blend that one down and see how it's getting the blue mist in there and we'll drag that across as well. Beautiful. See, it doesn't take much to blend them. You don't have to over blend a cloud. See how easy that was? Let's get that, wipe that brush. And we'll just softly blend these out as well. Leaving the vibrancy there though. We want these to look closer than those first group that we put in there. There we go. Now I want the evening moon real vibrant. Where's my island? The end of my island's there. So I want a nice reflection coming. I want to get it right there. Now I'm just going to use my finger. You don't have a pounce or anything special like that. I'm just going to use my finger. So I'm going to try and get this happening onto the paint there. Okay, and I want me moon about here. So I'll put it on. Doesn't have to be too big. There you go. Now look at all that paint on my finger. I don't want to get that everywhere. So I'm just going to wipe my finger. Okay, and then I want to try and create the intensity of that moon there. So I'm going to go around with my finger. Now pick up some more paint accordingly to what you're going to need and get that vibrancy going. Now I want it really white. So now I'm just going to pick up the paint and get into that white there. Now see what's happening. Look, I'll, I'll show you. It's, it's trying to mud up. So what I'll do is I'll dry that a little bit now. Just so as I can get the outer edge of this a bit more smoky joe. And I'm just using my finger. Now it's still very wet. Just dried it a little bit more just so as I can get all this fading out there like so. Look at that. Just using my finger here. You might have a little scrumbling brush you might want to use, which is fine. Because I want to be able to set the bright white on top of this. So I'm wiping my finger as I go, the same method I do with me blending brush, using a different finger as well, just to get control. There we go. Who knows, we might even put a... Pull something out there like that. Now I want to grab my finger again and just try and get the... I'll use my controllable finger, one I can control. Just loading the paint up again, and I want to get the intensity right there now. Now, because we've dried it, we can set that on there. 
you notice before it was mudding up within that blue. Now I'm going to wipe my fingers and probably just fix that cloud that's in front of it because we have distorted it a bit. So not to worry, let's just get some white and carefully put in front of that glare there and use your brush. I'm just using the fan brush here. And some glare here on that cloud. I've just dried it that little bit more again. As so as we can get that there. The nice vibrant luster of it. And for a bit of luck, that's gonna look like the moon. I might grab my little brush here, let's say this one, and get some of that um, white coming right out there as well. Just like that, that's it. Now I just wanna pull the uh, tape off our horizon line. And then we can get onto the next half of the painting. And I don't mind getting my fingers a bit grubby, that's why I wear gloves. And just squash that ridge down like that. And down here. Now, while we wait for that top to dry a bit on its own as well, I'm gonna start mapping in the water half of the painting, all right? So we're grabbing some more of this craft paint with the retarder in there. I'm gonna put her on a brush and we'll get all this water. Condi all the water area conditioned with this craft paint so as we can get that water to look waterfied. I'll go up here a little bit just into that ground cover there, there we go. Now I'm gonna, I've got the phalo blue and I'm gonna grab a little bit of this Payne's Grey and mix with that. Okay, a bit more. Just so it's a different darker value blue. Get it on my brush. And we'll just paint the water now. So let's start from about here. Roughly there, down to there, there we go, now you want it a bit darker in the foreground and then let it lighten up under the horizon just to give it that look that it's come, going away from you. If I can get that to happen. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Now I will get some of the Payne's Grey on its own. Just on my brush here, just so as I can get some of these. So I'll get some of this stamped in there. Just some darker elements there. I'm just stamping them in. Probably a pocket over here somewhere. Because if I brush it in, it's just gonna wash into that paint. And I want this to be distinctively darker. Okay, I could wipe that there. And I wanna waterfy that now, so we'll waterfy that all the way across there. Yes, beautiful, exactly what I'm looking for. Lightly does it. I'm just pressing lightly and I've got some darker values in the water. Now we're going to put that moon in there. So let's go again, picking up some white on your finger. There's our moon. So roughly the thickness of the moon and we'll come, we'll just come, just dance that down the water in a straight line like that. Okay, get it on there a bit more. Better pick up some more. There we go. In a straight line. 
Now we don't want to wash that into the water too much. Now we've got this brush. I'm going to wipe all the build up off it because it's got a lot of dark paint on it. Wipe the build up and we want to waterfy that. So I'm going to Now I need more on there, it's just not enough. So find any soft brush, I've just got a soft filbert here. I'm gonna load this up with the white paint because my finger was pushing it right down. And stamp that on the water so it's nice and white, but in a straight line, of course. Get some more on there, in a straight line, Ian. There we go, I'm just mucking with it till I feel I'll get it right. There we go. Grabbing that brush again and waterfy that. There we go. I buggered this up here. <laughs> so I've wiped my brush and I'm gonna just pull the dark back in there like that. And I'm just going to from the dark areas, get that white off there. Just like that, and the same on this side if I feel, there we go, if I feel it's just too much. How's that looking? Not bad, not bad. Just like that, that'll do it. Now you've all seen me do this before, grab yourself a flat toothbrush in the water Pull some of that down and then start pulling that into the brush. And we're going to make the shimmer on top of that water. Okay. And we want to get our shimmer on there. Oh, yeah. Try not to get it in the sky, which I did. That's too much. I've got to. That's it. That's our shimmer on the water. We can probably bring it out here more as we come. All right, I want to get some of the phalo blue mixed with black. I want a very dark value of it just to get our distant mountains there. And I'm going to use a, um, I've got like a coarse filbert brush here. Get the top of this in on the sky there, bits of air in between it. This is all going to be in silhouette, but I'll get all out here done first. Coming down, get it all different heights. And then we can lock this in and we can put, if we want, the subtlest highlights within here just showing different values of surface area and light hitting it. Okay, now I've changed my brush to a flat. Okay, and I've picked up my bullshit stick just so as I can get that horizon line nice and level without any messy crookedness, okay? So reasonably across there, bring it straight across. So I will dampen it again, pick up some more just so you can see what you need to do here. Here we go. Move the stick out the way, come from underneath. Turn your brush around this way. Oh, that's if, if you're working on a table, it's a lot different, but on an easel on its side like this, you're stuck with different challenges. That's one island done. I'm sorry, my video wasn't on. I mixed up some of this colour here with some white, okay? And I stamped on this background mountain. Then I grab some more white and put into that to get a lighter value. 
then I stamped in this bit of mist so it'll be between that mountain and the one we put in front of it just to create some distance and some more luster value to your painting. I'm wiping the brush on the side of my board there just so as I can merge that a bit better. There we go. Now I've given that a bit of a dry and I'm going to grab my bullshit stick again and I want to get the bottom of this landmass on now. So we'll start from over here. Rest on your stick, hit the painting, press and slide along. Just to get our bottom reasonably straight. And then we can go back to the um, filbert that we had on the other side. Picking up that darker value again. And coming in front of this mountain. So I've given that a little bit of a dry. And we'll come in here. This is just something a bit closer and not as high. I better get some more colour in that. I've watered it too much here. It's became transparent. There we go. And we're just going to come down here. Because it's night time, but you can sort of see light put in distance between bits and pieces here and there. There we go. I'll dry this and I'll go over it a lot better, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, so we finished that. Now I just want to get the slightest highlights in there. Using this colour, I've got the black and the uh, phalo blue there, so we'll get enough of that. I'm using that hog bristle flat fill, but, and we'll get some of the white again. And let's see how this goes. Not too bright. And I want to give this just some depth value of loveliness within your painting. Come up here. This is very, very, um, minimal but it'll be noticeable just so it's not like you didn't cut corners just putting a cheap black background there you've got some pizzazz with it you know leave the bottom dark just to create depth down there mainly the tops some of this highlight this is a very dull highlight but it's enough just to make the person looking at it going I like that it's all right Because you always, what I do, always paint, assuming that person's going to be there looking at it, saying certain things about it. Just, just on this foreground one, okay? It's just putting that bit of dark detail in there. So you've pretty much done that. This has had time to dry down here. We're just going to put a slight foreground here, a stony foreground. And back to our phalo blue again. And the black, mixing them together. And this is pretty much the, um, the darkness. So you see this bit jutting out? You want it in cahoots with the horizon line. Get it as thin as you want. There we go. Just like that. These are going to be stones, but this is all the, the depth within there, okay? And then we're going to come around and pretty much have some stone, a stony shoreline here, but you need all this depth. So you can just stamp it on to get that effect if you want, or brush it on. I think my tape's not sticking, is it? come out so I'll go where I roughly want about there come out I'm gonna come down the painting from about here and I'll come off the painting there I need a little bit of water in that paint just to get it to move across a little bit better than what it is get that there more or less there we go coming down here there we that's it 
but now we can block all that in and you'll see what happens when we add the little highlights here oh, I will anyway I have a small fill but just for those people who really want to get some other little scragglers out there like that not too big but just something indicating oh yeah there's some loose ones there uneven stones out there and maybe a few here somewhere in the moonlight something there just coming off this shelf of stones it's a stony shore pretty much so break it up like that I'll get these ones a bit better out there so they look like stones and keep everything in cahoots with the horizon line we could probably put the odd little one feathering off it here as well just like that now I've given up there a dry we want this more on the bluey black side now because we're going to grab that and we're going to highlight it just grab yourself some white you've got on the palette there and we are going to highlight them now okay I'm going to pull that out a bit now I want to highlight a lot of those stones to make them look like stones so we're just going to grab the tops of them let's see how this brush is looking stick your tape down again you need a lot of dark in between here to make it work now get your brush so these are not feathered they're they're sharp this brush is not the best i might have to change it we'll see how we go scatter them don't make any patterns this was a filbert but it's that munted up i'm using this round now so we'll get the lightest bit on top of some of these leaving the the bottom dark and we just got to do a hundred or so stones as you come closer to the bottom of the canvas like there you can bring them a bit fatter I mean these sort of stones I do they sort of look messy but at the end of it all once they're highlighted and whatnot they don't look too bad eh they're all right when someone's looking at it they go wow the person who painted those stones they put character in that I like it it's a character movement see there what we're getting so we'll get a highlight in all these little ones out there and where they meet this bit you need to separate them like that there we go pick up more so what I'm going to do I'm going to go and do this over the whole lot this small out there and a bit bigger as you come forward okay all right now we're going to highlight pockets of those stones so there's the paint we were using just simply grab more white so you've got a highlighted value of that color there something more noticeably brighter but not too bright though too bright turns your painting into snot i feel and the same again just let's see I want to get a band of maybe some light coming through here just hit those bluey ones there don't go putting these as their own in the dark you've got to try and imagine where the lights coming from and just highlight the, those particular stones there we go glistening in the moonlight 
So now I'm going to do this in areas within this painting, okay? See, some of the big ones, you can put a few movements there to make it look like there's different rocks. All right, we can put a dead tree here, something coming out of the water and leaning over out. So we'll come here, keep the bottom of that flat, and then bring your tree up. It's like an old, munted up, hurt, dead tree. Twist your brush, get this nice and sharp, make a tree looking. And sharpen it up. Put some pride in this little bugger here. This is, this is the little bit that sells the painting, this bit right here. Well, I hope. That's the main trunk. Now see how that looks floating? That brush you just got, wipe it. You've still got paint on it. And we just want to get a bit of a shadow in the water there, something like so. Very lightly. Okay. And the shadow's following that shape there. It's coming around there and dying all right then we're going to grab some more of that paint on the brush just wipe it off up here somewhere and now we've got the reflection of that in the water as well so it's there it's coming closer to the water here so and it's going to meet there because that bits in the water boom okay so let's try and authenticate that. How's that looking in the monitor? Yes, that looks like the shadow of that. I'm going to just lace it over here a bit more. I might highlight those rocks in front of that shadow. And now I'm going to pick up a liner brush. I will just get a bit of there that's in the water there that bit there's in the water now pick up a liner brush same color you got the paint a bit inky now you don't want too much on this we just want to say come here land your brush and get these nice and skinny going upwards to nothing there we go there's one there and we'll probably can put something coming across here. Twist it. I'm twisting and I'm squiggling and getting this line there so we can get some beautiful sharp branches on that. So they're that dark that they stick out like the bee's knees. Coming up here. And this one can have some other stuff coming off it as well. Something there, something there. How's that looking? Yeah, I'm just looking in the monitor there. That's not too bad. I feel I might want maybe put a, just a bit of a broken one on there like that and something pulling out from the front here. Now, people asking me in my show, who did I used to watch when I was learning on YouTube? And there's an American guy called Wilson Bigford. He always, and I like that aspect, putting just dead bits of broken things like that there as well. I'm just getting this nice and firm there. There we go. And I might just put, I don't know, Just some silhouetting of something within it. Some kind of leaves hitting, getting hit in the light. 
not too much. That'll do it, eh? All right, I'm just going to put my autograph on here and then we'll whack a frame on it. Now, be sure to check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe if it's your first time here. Oh, let's get my name a bit. There we go. And all my tutorials are for sale. Message me on Facebook. Okay, we'll get this autograph on there and we'll put Steve's little paw print on there as well. All right, let's put this frame on there. This should look all right. Oh, yeah. That's not too shabby in that white edged frame there. That looks quite nice. We've got this nice element in the foreground there of a dead tree. Got the moon, night sky, and some elements to break it up. And just remember, you can do that. Well, I hope you like this exercise. I enjoyed doing this today. It's quite something different. Just that little tree in the foreground made a big difference, I feel, in that painting. And like I said, check out the links in the description below. And if you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, okay? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.